Okay, this will be the last video on this exercise, but you know, the last video actually raised a couple of questions for me, and um, you know, really that was uh, what happens when it doesn't just work out nicely when you don't have the derivative of the function in the numerator and you know the original function in the denominator. So I thought, well, let's have a bit of a look at that. Um, so here we've got two situations where it doesn't just work out nicely. The derivative of this here would just be one, and you know we've got a two there, unfortunately, which is a real pain. So we can actually do a couple of things to deal with that. Um, the first thing is that a uh, scalar multiple can actually just move through the integral sign without having any issues or any effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out the common factor of two. So I write two at the front, then the integral, and when I've taken it out, it's one which is left there over x minus one with respect to x, and now that's looking pretty good. So we've got the derivative here and the original function there. And, you know, let, let's just solve this now. So this is 2 times log e of the modulus of x minus 1 and then plus c. Yeah. So that's pretty nice. Okay, so it's not bad when it's like that, when you can just take a number out and, you know, have it so it works out pretty well. This next one's a bit more complicated, though. Because even if I take that 3 out, so let, let's do that to start off with, okay? So I'll take the 3 out. Now I've got the integral of 1 over 4x plus 5 with respect to x. This number still isn't the derivative of this. We need it to be a 4. So I just make it a 4. So I've got 3. I've got the integral of 4 and then 4x plus 5 in the denominator there with respect to x. Now, I've multiplied this by 4. Okay, so to counter that, I also have to divide by 4. So I'm multiplying by 4, but I'm dividing by 4 to cancel it out, really. So it's still technically the same expression, but, you know, now I've got that value where I need it to be. And so I can say that this is 3 quarters at the front of log e of the modulus of 4x plus 5. And then we always have to have that plus c on the end. And that's it. Now, there is um, a rule which goes along with this as well. Personally, I don't like the rule. I, I like to be able to think through a problem like that. I think that it's quite logical and, you know, it's that nice uh, balancing act going on there. But... If you really want the rule, then you can say that the antiderivative of 1 over ax plus b with respect to x is always going to be equal to 1 over a times log e of the modulus of ax plus b. And then remembering to have a plus c on the end. So that should be a more vertical line. So... Look, honestly, I think that that's rubbish. But, you know, that's just me. I might be a bit stuck in my ways or something like that. Anyway, we'll uh, leave that there. That's all I need to go over for this particular exercise. Those last two questions are a bit more difficult, and I think that it's really important to understand how they work. So, you know, make sure that you get some practice with that and that you do understand it. And if not, then, you know, seek help with it. Figure it out and... Um, you know, make sure that you are really understanding that because I'd say that it's quite a common question on past exams and, uh, you know, one which it's, yeah, really worth knowing. Anyway, we'll leave it there and see you next time.